So today, I got a little project with my Duramax, my 2015 LTZ 2500 HD. So it's been having some issues with running too cool, probably well below the 185, 190 degrees Fahrenheit that it should be running at. Um, that's not good for the longevity of your engine. Not only that, but it really screws up the gas mileage. So I looked up the trouble code. Luckily, I have a reader. And it showed that it was throwing a code that corresponds to a low coolant or coolant temperature below a test threshold or whatever. Um, usually indicates that a thermostat, of which there are two on this platform, is uh, stuck open or faulty. Uh, and we're going to replace them. So it's a really quick job. There's a few videos out there, but uh, I figured I'm going to show you my way of doing this. Okay, guys, uh, some of the basic tools that you'll need is, uh, if, if you care, uh, get a little uh, torque uh, reader for when you're putting on those bolts back. If not, just nice, firm, hand-tight with a ratchet uh, is all you need. Obviously, 3 h ratchet with an extension, uh, a little bit of elbow to help you out. Um, you want a 13-millimeter um, socket. Um, and either a 13 millimeter or a half inch will work as well. A uh, wrench, and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, some vice grips to get your coolant hose off. Um, of course, you need your thermostats. Um, get yourself some nice nitro gloves, guys. There's a lot of dirt in there and stuff. And then I wanted to show you my Innova uh, 5160 uh, code reader. Now, this is an expensive one. I, I think I paid about $350 or $400 uh, during a trip to Tahoe. And this specifically is for heavy-duty trucks, um, and uh, it's a really good code reader. It also clears DTCs, which is really awesome. That's just how I found out that it was a specific uh, code related to uh, uh, coolant temperature, which was below the test threshold for the uh, engine. Okay, so what I have here is the 2015 uh, Duramax LML 6.6 uh, .6, uh, liter, 400 cubic inch, basically, uh, diesel uh so it's a pretty stout uh engine it's a v8 i think they developed this with uh partnership with mitsubishi a long time ago um it's pretty much a bulletproof engine but uh as everyone knows diesels run forever but it's all that auxiliary stuff bolted on that uh, wear out over time uh but as long as you stay on top of that stuff the engine itself is relatively bulletproof all right guys so I just want to point out a couple things. Obviously, you're going to need to clamp this together with your vice grips to get the uh, upper radiator hose up and out of the way. Um, right here, the oil filler tube, two 13 millimeter bolts right down here. Uh, and one, it's hard to see, but it's uh, kind of hidden behind the bracket here, and that's what that elbow will help with, I think. Um, there's also a little keyway on that, so don't try to yank that out. But uh, obviously this right here uh, is the housing that we're gonna be pulling out, okay? A couple things that are gonna be helpful to move is this uh, uh, refrigerant uh, valve here. Uh, there's two 13 millimeter bolts uh, right here. You're gonna have to take the top one off first uh, to get yourself uh, to the bottom one. Uh, that's where the open end wrench is gonna come in handy. And then there's a, a, a sensor that just pops off uh, right here. Um, so a nice little pry bar, just pop that off, uh, push it out of the way, and then you should have access to, to those main 13 millimeter bolts, uh, and then uh, pulls right off. So let me get started. All right, guys, as usual, it seems like the most simple things to do are a pain in the butt, guys. So where I live in Ventura County, California, okay, all the auto parts stores don't stock your typical maintenance parts for Duramaxes. The radiator hose, the thermostats, the coolant temperature sensors, they're, they're all like a special uh, order part. Next day or two or three days, they actually tell me I should go to Amazon and get it cheaper as well. Uh, and even the dealer, two thermostats at the dealer, uh, 160 bucks for, for two. That's yeah, just insane. Anyway, guys, uh, enough of my complaint. Let me show you where I'm at. 
Okay, as you can see, guys, I, I got the uh, radiator hose off right here. Took a little bit of uh, twisting and beating to do. Um, it'd be a good idea at this point, if you got over 100,000 miles, go ahead and change that radiator hose. Uh, at the auto parts store, 110 bucks. At the dealer, psh, I don't even want to ask. Uh, or Amazon, a couple days. So I ended up getting it off without destroying it, so I'm going to reuse it. Um, let me show you where I'm at here. Okay, guys, you can see. Hey, guys, you can see uh, the two back uh, bolts that I undid right there and right there. And by the way, right next to that is the. Uh, coolant temperature sensor uh, which I'm going to replace because uh, I had ordered the part on Amazon uh, and I got two more left um, to do right there in the front and I'm going to pull out that assembly alright guys uh, as you can see the uh, the forward um, thermostat uh, stayed put when I took the housing off the, the rear one close to the firewall is actually in with the housing let me show you uh, there you go. Uh, there's the bottom of the housing, and as you can see, this one uh, came out with it. That little rubber seal uh, didn't look too bad. The top are the uh, aftermarket, and uh, they're made in Israel, by the way. Um, it's a Murray uh, brand, uh, and then the bottom are the OEM. Um, they definitely uh, feel kind of crusty, um, but let me give you kind of a look at these two this happens to be the front of the engine uh, without the holes you can see they are different um, definitely the OEM looks more sturdy it's heavier you know um, but you know I don't know you know something someone wants me to trust Israel you know I mean it's not China um, and Israel makes some good war machines not that it matters but uh, you know time will tell you know um, it's going to get me back on the road because uh, I got a trip coming up and I, I want to be uh, <laughs> not uh, too cold on the engine or overheating. So, um, you know, uh, maybe I'll, I'll buy some OEM ones uh, later on uh, as backup. But otherwise, let's uh, get put, put these in here. But you can see here, the way you put them in is the uh, front of the engine uh, has the one with these little holes right there. And they are spaced a little bit wider or the OEM spaced wider than the aftermarket one, but I kind of looked at the orifices. This has got this little tube here where these got these little kind of restrictors, but they, they flow. So I don't know, you know, um, they seem to do the same thing. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and put these in. All right, guys, uh, when you're done, this is about what it should look like. Uh, anyway, you can see that uh, everything's nice and clean, sensors back in place. Uh, when I do end up getting that uh, uh, coolant temperature sensor, you know, it's right there. Uh, you know, I, now I know I could take this out of the way really quick and, and pop that sensor out and replace it. So I'm not worried about that. Um, didn't destroy the hose. Um, and everything is in there, including the fan shroud bracket bolts and everything's nice and tucked up. All right, so I got the engine uh, idling. I checked for leaks, so I'm looking good there, and I'm just waiting for that temperature to go up a little bit. Um, I did erase the DTCs here with my uh, Innova, and uh, so no check engine light for uh, low temperature, low coolant temperature threshold. All right, guys, so uh, I've, uh, I'm going up to the uh, gas station for some fuel and uh, normal driving, uh, and it's running about 180, I think that's about 185 right there. That's where it tends to like it before uh, uh, I start having those uh, codes. Uh, uh, same kind of drive, you know, it'd be down just above, like one, one hash mark above 160, definitely uh, too cold. Uh, it seems to run better, it could be psychological, but you know, when, when your temperature is, is proper, uh, the computer will uh, shoot the right amount of uh, uh, fuel ratio uh, in those injectors. So it's really important to uh, get this right. So I would call that a success, guys. Um, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, we'll see you later.